Welcome, and we will start with our bracha, of course. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshana B'mitzvotah V'tzivano L'asok B'divrei Torah. Amen. 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 <coughs> and we'll go into the screen share. And uh, we're talking about, at this point, where Jacob is and his family, his entire family, are moving down to the land of Egypt. And we talk about the 70 souls, and we're starting to actually enumerate them. Uh, we've had uh, the children of Leah here, and now we're going to go on, I believe, with the um, children of Zilpa. Uvnei Gad Tzifion Vachagi, the sons of God, Tzifion Vachagi. And um, Rabbi. Let me, let me finish the verse, if, okay. if, if you will. Just hold the question a second. Shuni, these are the, the children, right? Shuni, the Etzbon, Eri, the Arodi, the Areli. So God had quite a number of children. Yes, Harlan, what's the question? Uh, what I can't understand is uh, Simon had a uh, son called Saul. Was yes. Saul the first king of the uh, Israeli Israelites? Okay, is so, that the Saul no, that I was thinking? No, of? no, it's a different Saul. Uh, oh, that Saul happened quite a few generations later. Just happened to have the same name. That's pure. Well, uh, and yeah. also, also there uh, there was a one woman uh, mentioned called yes. Sarah. S e r a. Uh, Sarah. Sarah. Uh, not, not Dinah, Sarah. but Sarah was mentioned. Correct. What Sarah. was she doing? Sarah. Why would they mention her? Um, good question. Maybe because there we have to see. There might be some comment on the part of. Uh, there, there was of a Rashi. comment, but I don't know if that's true enough. She she pointed out Joseph's grave to Moses. She lived a real long, 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 long life. Okay, so you read some some midrash regarding. Yeah, I read okay. that, but I don't okay. know if that's true. Right. I don't think this is where we are yet. No, we're coming. It we're coming in a moment. We're so we can discuss that next. when we when we well, get there. We can take a look, right? Okay, so so the uvne asher and the children, uh, the sons of asher, yimna the yishva the yishvi uvria, and here we go. Here's the name that that Harlan was referring to, the Serach Achotam, and Serach, their sister. Uvne Vriya, so we're going to the next generation, Vriya's children, the sons of Vriya, Hever Umalkiel, Hever and Malkiel. So I don't know that there's any comment here. Let's just take a look. There's not. Nope, it doesn't look like there's any, any at all. Right, there's the comment for 19. So Harlan, I... Uh, <clears throat> the, the, uh, what what we can understand is that there just weren't a lot of daughters born to Jacob at the time. The, we know of a mm -hmm. few. Uh, we know that Yochevet was born to Levi, and we know about Serach, we know about Dina, and those are the only <coughs> girls that we know of that are listed mm -hmm. here. And the other mm -hmm. women had to be daughters-in-law, I would have to imagine, for those mm -hmm. sons who were married. That's 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 what it is. That's at least that's what appears to be the pshat. So Ela bnei Zilpa, these are the sons of Zilpa, Asher Natan Lavan Lalea Bito, whom Laban Laban had given to Leah his daughter, Vatelet at Ela Leakov, and she bore these to Jacob. That is Zilpa bore these to Jacob. Sheshesrei Neafish. So we're talking about sixteen here. And before I believe it was 33, correct? I'm not keeping a running total here. Yep, Shloshim Vishalosh. Right, so we've got 33 there, <clears throat> and we've got 16 here. Okay, uh, and onwards. Bnei Rachel Eshet Yaakov. There's a slight difference in the way it's expressed here, and Rashi will pick up on this. This is verse 19. So the sons of Rachel, the wife of Jacob, Yosef Uvinyamin. Joseph and Benjamin. Here we go. Bnei Rachel Eshet Yaakov. So, so Rashi points out that with all the other wives, it doesn't say, here it says Eshet Yaakov. It, it mentions specifically that Rachel was Jacob's wife. So how come? I mean, the others were his wives, right? And the answer is, Uvechulan lo ne'emar bahen Eshet. And regarding the, all the, other, the other three, they're not, it doesn't say they're his oh. wife, right? The wife of. Ella shahaita 
ikaro shall buy it. Mm -hmm. But the, the, it's because Rachel was the main wife. And we know, I like to say this, that were Jacob able to script his life, he would have had one wife. That would have been it. It would have been Rachel, and that's it. And uh, he wound up with the three other women by means of circumstances, because we don't script our lives, or if we do, very, very little. At any rate, Jacob didn't script his life. Onwards. So we're on to verse 20. Vayivaled le Yosef be'eretz Mitzrayim, born to Joseph in the land of Egypt, asher yaldalo osnat bat potifera kohen on. So we actually mention Joseph's wife here, right? Whom osnat, the daughter of Pot of Potifera, the priest of On, bore to Joseph. Et Menashe ve'et Ephraim. Menashe and Ephraim. So it's interesting. Notice how uh, we know that Joseph was, in fact, servant or slave to Potiphar. And here we have Potifera. And uh, I may have mentioned this uh, a while back, maybe last year, when we were talking about how Potiphar's wife tries to seduce uh, Joseph is that she had a prophecy that she was going to have children through Joseph and the she misunderstood the prophecy uh, the prophecy was referring to her daughter and this is a, this is a midrash and I have may have mentioned that I happen to read in the Quran that the Quran actually has that explicitly in the Quran that she that so it's interesting that the Midrash in some ways doesn't want to make Potiphar's wife look as bad as she comes out, at least in the Pshat, that her intentions weren't entirely lascivious. In onwards, um, verse 20, vayi, uh, that we had that, sorry, verse 21. Uvnei Vinyamin, the sons of Benjamin, so he has ten sons, Bela, Vavecher, Vashbel, Gera, Venaaman, Achi, Varosh, Mupim, Vechukim, Vaard. He had a lot of children. So that I believe that if you consider, since he had ten sons, and Joseph had two sons, you now have 12 sons altogether. So that in a sense, Joseph did have 12 sons. Excuse me one moment while I, okay, thank you. One second, just had to take care of that. Okay, so onwards now. Rachel Asher Yulad Yaakov. These are the children of Rachel who were born to Jacob. Kol nefesh arba'asar. So for all of them, 14. 14. Uvnei Dan, and now we have, of course, the uh, offspring of Bilha. Uvnei Dan, and the sons of Dan, Chushim. Even though it says, it's interesting, it says Chushim. His name was Chushim. We only have one son, but it says the children of Dan, and we have one son, and his name also happens to be in the plural as well. But as far as I know, you know, we just had one son. Onwards. Uvnei Naphtali, and the children are the sons of Naphtali, I should say. Yachtsael, Veguni, Veyetzer, Veshilem. So those, those are their names, right? Their names. Elev Nevilha, these are the sons of Bilha. Asher Natan Lavan Lerachel Bito, whom Laban had given to Rachel, his daughter. Vatelet et Ela Leyakov, she bore these to Jacob, Kol Nefesh Shiva, and we're looking at a total of seven children here. Kol HaNefesh Haba'a Leyakov Mitzrayma, and the, the entire soul, it's, it's uh, singular, who came with Jacob to Egypt, Yotz'e Yerecha, uh, who issued from his loins, Milvad Neshev Neyakov, besides the wives of Jacob's sons. So Golda here, they're actually mentioned that they were around, okay. Kol Nefeshishim Vashesh. They totaled 66. I have a question about uh, verse 25. Yes. Um, what seven is it referring to? 
Oh, okay. So we have to look back. So we're looking at. Uh, so we're going to look at uh, uh, Don and Naftali would be two, right? And then three, four, five, six, seven. What? What were three, four, five, six, seven? Uh, yachts, uh, so we've got Chushim, Yachtsael, Guni, Yetzer, and Shilem. Their oh, children. Two, three, four, five. Oh, so, okay. So you're talking about two generations. Okay. Yes, we are. In some okay. cases, three. In some cases, three. But in this one, we're talking about two. Right. Uh, here we go. Rashi on this. Kol uh, Hanefesh all the souls that came to Jacob. But it says nefesh, and nefesh is singular. It's not nefashot, right? Sheyatzu me'eretz k'na'an lavo mitzrayim, lamitzrayim. We're talking about the ones who left uh, the land of Canaan to come to Egypt. Ve'en hava'azo lashan avar. So Rashi has a grammatical note because it's, notice haba'a. Right, the accent is on the ah, and he points out that this is not the perfect tense. Okay, that we said this is a a imperfect uh, tense uh, because uh, it's it's talking about the process itself. Right, so this is not a per the perfect tense ela lashon hove, but it's the imperfect tense. Come more, and he gives examples in Esther. Book of Esther, chapter two, ba erev he ba a, and apparently here the accent again must be on the a he ba a, which would be uh, in the the imperfect. Uchamo vehine Rachel bi bito ba a im hatzon. So it has to do with this particular verb lavo. Okay, it's, it's somewhat of an exceptional verb, and and the tense of the verb depends on where you put the accent. So he's explaining that in these particular cases, because the accent falls on that last syllable, um, it's it's imperfect. Lefich ta'amo lamata ba'alaf. Here he says it explicitly. He says for this reason, the accent falls on the on the last syllable underneath the aleph. Lefich kesheyatsu lavo me'eretz knaan. Why? Because when they left to come from the land of Canaan, lo hayu ela shishim v'sheish. Because at that particular point, they only numbered 66. V'hasheni kol nefesh levet Yaakov haba'a mitzrayma. So now the accents on ba'a uh, is shivim. Uh, that is 70. Hu lashon avar, because that refers to, in other words, completed action. It's finished. Lefichach tamo lamala bebeit. And that's why the accent falls on the bait. In other words, ba'a as opposed to ba'a. Lefiche mishe ba'usham, because once they arrived there, in other words, they'd finished arriving, they were no longer in the process, hayushivim, at that point, they were 70. They numbered 70. Shematsu sham Yosef, why? Because, first of all, they found Joseph there, Ushnevanav, and his two sons, which would have made 69. Venitosva lahem, and added to them was Yochevet, Bein Hachomot. Remember, we had read how Yochevet, Moses' mother, was was born as they were arriving in Egypt, and that's how you get the number of seventy. Now, this is interesting because I don't know if this particular section that's in the parenthesis is actually Rashi here. It looks to me like this might be the editor, if we could call that person the editor. Um, of this of this Rashi and and this person is making a personal note here. He says the iyen bevi'uri the tirgum. It looks like the tirgum Yonatan. Look at my and and take a look at my explanation or my essay on targum Yonatan on the on Yonatan's uh, Aramaic translation. We this is Targum Unculus, but there's also a Targum Yonatan, 
ומשם תמצא, and there you will find, לרבות צמאונך, and he said, ברש"י. So, okay, let's just say, and here you will find uh, that to slake your thirst. In other words, apparently in this particular essay there, he must talk about this. Now, the Burashi, does that mean that he found this in a manuscript of Rashi? Or I think that's what it has to mean. And it, it, it could mean some manuscript on Rashi. The, you know, I don't know. I don't think it's Rashi's uh, uh, explanation. Uh, although I guess it would be uh, Rashi's discussion on Targum Yonatan, but the very the very Hebrew itself does not sound like Rashi's style of writing, and so I'm not sure what this is you know where this is coming from necessarily. It's not in mine. Yeah, well, per stuff that's in parenthesis often is is left out of you know is considered stuff that was found in a manuscript but should not be there. It's, it represents some uh, problem in the text or some addition that shouldn't be there. And in the Talmud, sometimes you'll find a word in parenthesis and sometimes you'll find a word in brackets, like square brackets. The square brackets mean that you need to read it. it needs, it's part of the text and parenthesis generally means it, it should be omitted. It's not part of an accurate manuscript. So just some technical stuff going on here. Ule divrei ha'omer to'omot noldu im hashvatim. So this you might find interesting, and that is there are those who hold the opinion that when these sons are mentioned, there were female twins. Each one of them was born with an equivalent twin sister, right? Im hashvatim. So if, Rashi is saying, if you're going to try and pose that particular theory, Tzrichim anu lomar shemetu. He says, we're going to have to say that they passed away, they died. Lifnei yiridatam lemitzrayim, that they, before they went down to Egypt. Shaharei uh, lo nimnu kan, because they aren't being uh, numbered here, which is interesting, right? Because what it's saying, essentially where Rashi's coming from is, were in fact there any women, any other women who were born at that particular time, they would have been counted, had they been born to Jacob. So, you know, it's not just a question of leaving out women or women not counted. Uh, we said yesterday that that the wives, the, the daughters-in-law, would be counted with their husbands. Likewise, of course, the, the tribes themselves and their, and their spouses. And count, if Yocheved had had a twin brother, yes. they would have counted him. Right. Or, oh, yes. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Unless he died. I, I guess so. Unless there is a brother you know, that Yocheved had that we don't know about. They don't we count a very important person. Go they on. They don't count Jacob. Um, yeah. So are we assuming that 70 with that came Correct. with that's, that's how it says it, right. And okay. that's what it says. That came right, because I was just looking for that and I didn't right. see a, you know, a but or anything, you know, that right. would give me that. Okay, right. thank you. I think that's a good, I think that's a good theory. Okay, so he says, Matsati Vivayikra Raba. And this this could well be Rashi, right, who says, I found in Vayikra Raba. Uh, it's a Midrash Rabbah on Vayikra. These are extant, by the way. A sav shef nefashot hayulo. That when you read the sons of Esau, he had six sons, right? He had six souls. Vahakatuv kore otan nefashot. And, and the scripture, the katuv, scripture, refers to them, he calls them souls, beito, the souls of his house. Velashon labrabim. And there he, it, it obviously uses plural, right? I was pointing that out where here it's saying nefesh, right? So Je Esau had six sons, and they're referred to in the, in the, in the Torah as six souls, right? The fishahayu avdim le'elohit arbe. And because, why they mention that? Because they worshipped many gods. They, they had many gods. And so... They, there was a lack of unity amongst them. 
And I think that if we were to scratch this a little bit harder, I think it gets into the whole issue of what does it mean to believe in God? What is it really that's happening in, that we t when we talk about believing in God? And I've talked about this a little bit, which is I see it as a process of trying to understand one's place in the unity, sorry, in the universe, in, in, the, in, the, in the awareness of the the depth and the and and the profound nature of existence and that that's what belief in god is about it's the process of trying to understand that and people pick on different gods because when we talk about belief in god we're talking about what we consider to be an ultimate source of something Right? So if you, an ultimate source of protection, an ultimate source of power, and something of ultimate significance. And of course, people do pick other things besides the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So that's one reason why, in some ways, it's saying that, you know, that there's a level of something coming together when when a group of people all are on the same journey, on the same path, that in a way it binds your souls together when you're on that process together. At any rate, going on, Yaakov, Shivim Hayulo. <laughs> and look, so Esau had six children, Jacob has 70 offspring. The Katuv Koreotan Nefesh. And yet scripture refers to them as Nefesh, singular. The fish hayu of dim la el it has to be echad right la el echad because they all uh, were belief believed in one or they all served one God. Let me make sure I got the right word. Yeah, because they all served one God. Interesting, interesting thing. And by the way, this of course uh, supports the notion that the Shema Yisrael, that the Yisrael of Shema Yisrael, in fact, is Jacob. It's referring to Jacob. Mm -hmm. And that we're telling Jacob, we also believe in the Adonai Echad. We believe in this one God that he believed in. And in that way, we are binding our souls to him as well. So just uh, think it's a interesting, interesting Rashi here. Uh, let me make sure I, we're on to the next verse. Okay. I have, I have one thing. Um, sure. I'm I'm very new at um, the language, actually, mm. how it's all used. And I relate everything to music and words are very important. So in Bashana Haba'a, mm -hmm. so I noticed the way you said it in a couple of different ways and that it meant mm. different things. Mm -hmm. So um, when pronouncing words and songs, I want to make sure that you know how I pronounce them mm -hmm. is correct because there are different meanings. How is it? Because um, I know that Bashana Haba'a has that, you know, for the future. Right. Um, so is that the difference right there? Right, because you're saying Ba'a. Remember, he says that when the accent's on the second, on the last syllable, it's imperfect, it's yet to come. Okay. And cool. if it's ba'a, then it's past tense. So wow. you would not say bashana ha. If you said bashana ha ba'a, then you'd say it basically it would mean the year that came. Uh huh. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also wow about the God of Jacob, because yeah. I've been hearing you talk about the Shema. Right. And now I see more, even more deeply, about where you get your. Um, you know, preponderance of all of what the meanings are. Right. Uh, I mean, obviously, I read it elsewhere. I didn't, I didn't, certainly didn't come up with it myself. You know, I, I was reading it in commentaries on that verse that it was referring to. What they say is it's Yisrael. They refer to Jacob as Yisrael Saba, you know, mm -hmm. means Israel granddaddy. So it means, yes, because we know that Israel sometimes refers just to Israel, right? The people or the land. And so it's just a way of clarifying that it's referring to Jacob and not, not Israel in, in, a, in a generic kind of sense. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. 
So it's just interesting because this is, this is where I realized that there's actually some support for that interpretation. And also, by the way, that the whole sentence starts to fall into place because the Adonai Eloheinu isn't as essential if we're just talking about God's unity. If that's all we're trying to declare is our belief in God's unity, then why do we say Adonai Eloheinu? We could simply say, if we didn't mean by Israel, Jacob, we just meant, oh, Israel, meaning the Jewish people, right? All we'd have to say is Shema Israel, Adonai Echad. That's it. So what's the point of Adonai Eloheinu? So the point of Adonai Eloheinu is that if you're talking to Jacob, if you're addressing Jacob, then you're trying to you're saying, you know, this this Hashem that we be, that we ourselves believe in, having you know so many generations later, Adonai Echad is the same Adonai that you also served. That's what we're saying. I'm not saying there aren't, obviously I'm not limiting it to only one interpretation, but at least at this point it seems to me that that would be the basic interpretation of, of those words. And that the Adonai Echad is referring to the fact that it's the same Adonai as that, that Jacob was and Abraham and Isaac, of course, were proposing, were believing in and serving. We'll go on a little bit uh, more. We have a little time. Ve'et Yehuda and Judah shalach lefanav el Yosef. He sent Judah, okay, this is Jacob, of course. He sent before him to Joseph. We certainly understand why it would be Ju Judah, right? Lehorot uh, lefanav goshna. So this is interesting. What lehorot lefanav? Did, did you uh, skip verse 27? I'll look and see. I didn't think so, but maybe I did. I thought you were doing the Rashi for 26. Did I? Did, is there a Rashi on 27? No, but I oh, don't. Oh, okay. We didn't read it. You're saying we didn't read it. Paul, that you. Yes. Yeah. But, but we did read 27 already, I believe. Okay. I thought you were. I thought the last thing we did was the Rashi for 26. I think you're correct, but I think regardless, I did read 27. So. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, okay. we can go back and listen to the tape, right? No, it's all right. <laughs> okay. If it was out of order, I, that's, yeah. you know, it could, it could well be, it could well be. Okay. So anyway, um, this, this verse, looking at, trying looking at it, it carefully. So he sent Judah before him to Joseph, Lahorot Lefanav Goshna, to, to teach before him. So before him, I believe, is referring to Jacob. Goshna, of course, that means to the land of Goshen. So we have to, I mean, what exactly? Lahorot means to, to, to teach, you know, the word Torah, Moreh, etc. So what are we talking about? Uh, so some kind of preparation we can assume, right? That he sent Judah on ahead. Rashi's going to comment on this. I, th I think, uh, Rabbi, that uh, he didn't know where Gershon was, uh, that the land was. Uh, Jacob didn't know. So he sent uh, Judah to, to find out how to get there. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, I'm not sure. I, I just... I don't know if Joseph was actually living in Goshen at the time, and of course the brothers had come down there. I'm not. Let's. We'll find out. It's not. It. It doesn't. It's not obvious what we're talking about it, unless it's like what you're saying somehow to 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 explore the the journey, etc., and how to get there. Let's just see what Rashi says. Vayavo Artsa Goshen, and they arrived in the land of Goshen. So we'll take a look at Rashi on this. So Rashi just goes straight to it, right? And he says, we'll see, right? We'll see what, what this is. So he says, Katargumo. So Rashi refers now to the to Onkelos. And Onkelos here, is tr the, his translation gives us also an explanation. And he says, Lifnot lo makom, right? And that means to, to free up a place for him to stay to prepare a place for him to stay, and to also to, lehorot could be to, to teach, to, to learn, 
how heach, how yityashev ba, they would settle there. In other words, the details of the settlement. So in other words, some kind of preparation. Lefanav, before him, kodim shiagia lasham. So Lefanav definitely referring to back to Jacob. So prior to his arrival there, prior to his arrival there, J J Judah needed to set up a place and make preparations so that he could arrive and wouldn't just be arriving and then wondering what he was going to do and where he was going to stay, etc., etc. Umidrash Agada, and there's a Midrash, Lahorot Lefanav, because the Midrash takes this interesting word Lahorot, which we know is, ref is you know, uh, is connected to the word Torah, the Taken Lo Beit Talmud, in other words, to set up for him a place of study, an academy, Shemisham Tetzei Hora'a, from which would come out, issue forth, teachings. So that's why, the why, Midrash. Uh, yeah. Why Gershon? I mean, why, why, uh, why this particular uh, uh, land? Uh, is it a better land uh, in Egypt than the rest of Egypt or what? I don't know why this particular okay, so land. It's coming. I, I, it's I, coming. So we it's, will. I'll, yeah. Do you want me to keep you all in suspense there? Yes. Okay. We'll keep you in suspense. No. The question is a wonderful question to be answered with God's help on Thursday. Yeah, but if you read a little bit ahead, Harlan, because you just need to, it it, it is answered within the text. Okay. I had a question. Is there, isn't there a Rashi that explains the names of Benjamin's children? Yes, there is. A, there is. I believe that that's a Rashi that we, uh, somewhere or another, I don't know, uh, basically the explanation, which you may recollect yourself, is that he named all his children based on his brother Joseph, that every one of those names can be explained in some way as a reference to Joseph. So did I miss that? Was that, that we wasn't just, No, no, we have not. Dealt, remember, we, unfortunately, uh, we are skipping through the texts because I wanted, I decided that it was more important to try and do each week Cedra and not just go Caseder. Uh, you know, I've struggled with myself about that, but I think, you know, I mean, this is the way we started and I'm sticking to it. And of course, I'm recording all these. And at some point, with God's help, we'll have an entire, you know, an entire uh, tr uh, interpretation of the Rashis from beginning to end, you know, that, that simply span a number of years. So, you know, I'm hoping at some point we will do that. I don't believe we've actually done it together uh, Shira Beth at this point, but I am also familiar with that, and I believe it, it is a Rashi that deals with that. So let me make the little marking in here. Let's see if I can do that. Let's see if I can see something here. There it is. Do I see a? I thought I did. Hold on a second. Sorry. I did try. Um, all right. <laughs> it's so funny. I don't see the uh thanks i hope to see you thursday yes god willing that'll be lovely and have a wonderful trip up yeah north of course is beautiful we know that mm -hmm. don i want to go back to don uh -huh. oh, it's so beautiful oh. I'm gonna put a bookmark just want to do this before i stop the the um Stop the share. Yep. Stop the recording. Thank you.